Hey, Chris with RC Worst. Welcome back to another great video. Today we are on part two of our mini series of wiring float switches to contactors. So let's take a look and see what we're in for today. Okay, so here we've got uh, this configuration today, as I mentioned, a double float switch. Uh, so it has an internal relay built into the float switch mechanism. And thus that switch has three wires because we also have to provide power to the relay coil, uh, which creates the holding circuit in the double float switch, allowing it to operate. So um, I guess briefly, uh, double float switches are often employed in scenarios where you need to have a wider range of pumping. Um, and so that's where we're looking at wiring one of these up. Um, so in this configuration, it's a little bit different. We're, we're jumpering our coil over to L1, but we're also jumpering our white wire, which is the coil wire um, or the power wire essentially for the coil in the relay. Uh, and then we've got our black and our red jumper between basically. So it goes through the float switches and depending on whether those are both open or closed, it's going to send voltage through and energize that coil or de-energize the coil based on the float positions. Okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, make a little bit more sense of this by going out in the shop, wiring up an actual contactor with a double float switch and uh, should be easy to follow along. So let's head out. All right, so here we are out in the shop and we're gonna show you now the double float switch configuration. Uh, so if you're not using a double float switch in your configuration, we are also doing two other videos in this mini series, as we're calling it, where we're doing a single float setup as well as two floats, not to be confused with a double float. Uh, whereas the double float has a built-in relay that creates a holding circuit within the action of the floats itself, which is why double float switches have three wires instead of your typical two. So the wiring on this one's a little different, so let's jump into it. Okay, so what we need to do uh, is this white wire, it was in our diagram shown going right here under this terminal, which is always energized. Since we've got these nice little push on connectors, if we hook it up over here, it's going to do the same thing because we have this jumper going between this point and this point. And then what we also need to do is make sure that the black wire is on another spot that is always energized. So right there uh, to share with the incoming power of the system. And that leaves the red wire to, leap, to essentially jumper that power through the black wire, through the float switches and back to the coil to complete our 220 volt coil circuit, which is then going to pull in our contactor. So let's put some power to this bad boy and I'll show you what it does. Okay, so we've got our two float switches here, this one being the bottom float, this one being the upper float in a double float configuration. When the, of course, in a, um, I guess a pump down application uh, where the bottom float, the water level goes up, our contactor remains in the same open position. And then finally, our upper float goes up, pulling in that contactor. And what's nice about these double floats is where they have that holding circuit relay, the water level starts to drop in our tank. Of course, the pump continues to run until that lower float drops out and the system shuts off. So very simple setup for this, not too complicated. Um, so that's pretty much all it takes to wire one of these up. All right, so that's all we got for you today. Thanks once again for joining us and we will catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. And uh, once again, this is a, a, a mini series talking about three different configurations for a contactor. So make sure you catch those as well. We'll see you later.